So my name is Samuel da Silva. I'm an associate professor at the Sao Paulo State University, UMASP in Sorteira. And I performed this work with collaboration of my colleagues, Professor Gael Chevalier from Institut de Recherche Fanto in Business on France, and my PhD students Rafael Telod and Lucas Miguel from UNESP. The outline of my talk includes the following talks. First, the motivation and challenges, and the next, the approach for detection and for quantifying the of lost time torque. And finally, the concluding remarks. So our work is motivation is to sort of serve the behavior of this benchmarker of both the joints, named by RLB. Here we can observe the experimental set setup. It's composed by two aluminum beams with a bolted joints. This connection presents several nonlinear effects induced by contact and its Therese effect. So if we were looking to monitor the system safety by regarding the model parameter is a complicated task. It happens because the timing torque uh, and the model parameter displays a nonlinear relation. Our work's primer is to reply to the issue. Can I use the model parameters uh, as a damage sensitive factor to detect last time torque? The concept is to perform is to apply Gaussian process regression as a stochastic interpolation gene. Here we can see the two most sensible nature of frequency, named by the frequency of the 15 to 16 mode. And we can observe that this nature of frequency changes against the observation, assuming different days. And the differences here correspond to severe effect, not precisely associated with the torque fluctuation. This is true when we analyze the variation to this nature of frequency compared with fluctuation of the torque. We assume that the torque in these two conditions, in the 80 and 60 uh, centinewton meter, correspond to the half condition, and the other are the data in the damaged situation. The box plot of the model parameters confirmed this challenge to classify this state using only the nature of frequency. A confusion is observed in the initial range of the time torque, so it is really difficult to detect some structural change, observe only these two nature of frequency separately. Uh, the estimated stress loop is identified here by harmonic balance using this vibration data measured in this vein. This can explain the spread of behavior. We can see that in the damage condition, the bolted joint is well timed. The restoring force uh, is described only by stiffness effect, and this effect is dominant. However, when the torque laws are present, the restoring force presents a stereotic effect with the dissipation of energy and the looping is open. Thus, in this condition, the nature frequency modified in a nonlinear way. Our idea is to monitor this effect without using a model to explain this or information about this terrestrial nonlinear dumping. And to do this, uh, by observing only the changes in the model parameters. The first algorithm that we apply to do this is the Gaussian mixture model to detect the torque changes in an unsafe model. This is a machine learning that proposes to identify a central cluster using training data. This data is based on matrix of the factors, in our case, the model parameters, with a probability density. Uh, of a combination of some groups of Gaussian. By using a testing data set in the handlet, is to use it to determine a score named a damage index to observe the damage index evolution, which you compare with a threshold. So when I'm using half of the data set in the half condition for training and the other for testing, 
this detection algorithm can swiftly detect the damage with no new false negative damage and a low number of false positive uh, uh, damage, around 5%. Here we can see the type 1 error and the type 2 error, so you can detect adequately uh, the existence in the binary classification using Gaussian mixture model using the features corresponding to the two frequencies in which the 50 and 60 mode. Once the damage is detected, we can deduce the torque level of the bottle joint with an indirect measure of vibration by applying Gaussian cross regressions to associate the changes in the nature of frequency with the torque applied. We assume that this function to be identified is a nonlinear form with a Gaussian distribution. We could train this for one bolt joint and apply it to another similar joint. I fit their training with the blue sample point uh, using square exponential as a kernel function, as a correlation function. We can obtain the red projection line uh, with a confidence interval representing the estimated variance with 95%. Uh, we can use some different points in Magenta for testing in a similar structure or similar uh, condition to observe the estimation of the torque. Mm -hmm. The validation of the estimated torque gives us an adequate performance for the Gaussian plus model when you compare the date five torque, the estimate torque, with the real torque, the actual torque, for all test range in gray samples, and the Gaussian process medium in the red line here. This is adequate result and this show that your algorithm works very well. So some remarks are made. First, the Gaussian mixture model is useful for damage detection with fluctuation, non-controlled uncertainty. The Gaussian process can correlate uh, torque and nature of frequency adequately. However, the model parameters are perceptible, unique to large changes in the torque. We believe that we could improve this with a better resolution of measurement the torque applied for training a Gaussian process, or by including some information about the nonlinear dissipation, uh, for example, some information of, of the stereo loop for training this Gaussian process model. So I would like to thank the financial support provided by the Ford in Brazil and Brazilian and France agency. Thank you for rotation now and open for questions or some comments. Thank you again.